Balance your gimbals in 15 seconds. Let's do it now. Electronic gimbals offer you three different points of stabilization. I'm gonna show you how to balance it in 15 seconds or less. If you want a super advanced look on how to balance it, I'm gonna link you to this video. So we're gonna try out the Ronin first. Go ahead and don't forget to click that link. So we're gonna break this down to get it ready to put onto all the different gimbals and we'll essentially use it the same way. We wanna make sure that we have area to do all the attachments. We're gonna use the Metabones adapter with a 28 millimeter Zeiss lens um, and the Move cam cage. All gimbals work pretty much the same way. They each have two or three axes that they make sure are electronically stabilized. On the Ronin S, and you'll see this on all the other ones, there's three different axes. There's a pan axis, there is a tilt axis, and then there's a roll axis. Once you get them all balanced, then you're gonna get a very nice, stable shot. First, we're gonna put on the camera. We're gonna lock that in and just have it set to where hopefully it's, the lens isn't hitting anything. So keep your hand on there, okay? Next thing is that you just kind of want to tilt it back a little bit. And now it's, you're going to want to see which way it's, it's starting to fall. I see that it one is going forward and it's also rolling to the right. So I can do one or two things. I can start with the roll here and I can start moving that so that I can fix my roll axes. That's it moving left and right. So once I do that, they'll start telling you which is the next axis you have to attack. So my roll is working and I'm just getting the camera falling forward. I can fix that a couple of ways. One, I could do it fixing this axis here, the tilt one, by moving forward and back. And we can see that it's telling me that I need to adjust the roll. But before I do that, another way to fix your your tilt axis is by moving your camera forward and back. As you can see, even though it's somewhat balanced there, my tilt, it still wants to go forward here. And that's because the camera's too front heavy. So what I want to do is open up the sled, go back until it stays right in the middle. So now you can see that it's telling me, oh, it's leaning to the right. Fix your roll, please. Yes, Mr. Ronan S, we're gonna fix my roll. So, you can see that it just kind of locked in place. That's kind of where you want it for the most part. Once you lock it, if it stays in place no matter where you put it, then you know that you're dynamically balanced. And for the most part, you should be able to leave it anywhere and it should just lock in place. This is without it being on. People used to walk into my office and see uh, that a couple of these gimbals were just like standing still and they're like, hey, are you gonna turn off the battery of that? And I was like, nah, man, they're just properly balanced. And that usually would blow their minds because they thought that a camera would be laid down like this and they allow the motors to do all the work. You want to be perfectly balanced so that the motors do as little work as possible. And that's how you get the most dynamic, smooth shots that you are looking for. So what I just told you, you can actually do it really fast once you get used to it. So what I'm gonna do is starting the counter as soon as I lock the sled here. Here we go. I'm about to lock it. And three, two, one. So I have kind of a minimal balance there where it will work. It will definitely be stabilized and it'll look nice. But the better you get and the faster and the more time you take to get um, the balance right, you're gonna be able to do things like just lock it kind of in place and it shouldn't move. And this is gonna be the optimal settings for your, for your gimbal because the motors don't have to do much work. I've seen a lot of different people when they do their gimbals, they're like sitting down like this 
they turn it on and then the, the motor brings it up. The problem with that is that you're essentially a lot, you're forcing the motors to do a lot more work. So go back and definitely always tweak it when you get a chance, when you set it back down, because you wanna be able to just do, you know, let it hold like in place, you know. So a couple things on the Lita's Helix. Um, this one's a little bit weird because you have to balance it in a couple different ways. Once again, this principle is still the same. You want to do the roll, you want to do the tilt, and you want to do the pan. This thing is kind of built upside down. So as you can see, there's a motor down here, there's a motor up here, and then this has a motor on the handle. So with that said, I kind of already pre-configured my setup that's gonna go on here. You, they also included a bunch of weights just so that you can get it precise. So the first thing that we have to do here is fix the, the roll axis. So we do that by just positioning this left and right. Once it kind of just sits in the middle, then you're good. You lock those axes here. And as you'll see, it'll start rolling over to the side. The way you offset that is by these weights. So you drop it to where you think it will work tighten it just a little bit and just kind of turn it to where you see that it hits that balance and that locks the roll axis which you can do here as well as you have to lock this one which is kind of kind of annoying but it's a pretty cool setup because you can actually just put this down so here you can see you just turn it a little bit and pretty pretty close to a balance there the next step that we want to do is our, um, we're going to do our rolling. I mean, our next step we're going to do is our pan here. And the way you do that is you lift this up on the side and you let it kind of fall left or right. So this, you can see it's falling forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to unlock this and we're going to kind of just slide it back to where it just kind of stays in the middle. That kind of feels like it's doing it there. Yeah. And once again, uh, whenever you balance one thing, it will kind of introduce where it needs to be even more finely tuned on the other one. All I'm doing here is just kind of shifting the weights over so that I can balance it again. Once I wanted to get super balanced and I know I'm 100% set, I'll tighten everything down. Now the next setup, and you always want to want to you always want to have this motor on the right hand side, is to lock your your tilt. I start if you see the numbers here. I start around one, just to see where it'll get me. On both sides, you just lift it to around one, and then the next test you do is you lift it up. If it goes false forward or back or it doesn't want to move, then you know that it's not it's not balanced. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to, what I would like for this to do is to be able to turn completely, go forward and back all the way without stopping. So now we're between four, we're gonna go to, let's go to two and, two and a half, see if that gets us closer. Okay, here we go. And that's getting close. And what I what I want to do, this should be able to go forward without. So too much weight at the bottom. So we're gonna keep going down. We're gonna go up to three. Now on this one, it takes a lot longer to do it. But once you you see how it's getting a little bit easier to turn, that's essentially what we want from it. So I'm gonna keep going down. Let's try three and a half. We know that four is definitely too much. So see, I can turn it almost all the way and it stays pretty locked. And that's where we want it because once again, we want the motors just like on every single axis to not do much work at all. If I turn it this way, if the camera falls forward a little bit, then we, we fix that axis there. So as you can see, it's pretty locked in all the axes here. 
we should be able to turn this on and do a complete run through now. So I'll turn it on real quick. And we can see that, that, that it's pretty much The Freefly Movi M15 is one of the most popular gimbals that were around for a long time. It could hold awesome big cinema cameras and it can also do DSLRs. Once again, you have a pan axis, you have a roll, and then you have a tilt. You can count the motors here, one, two, back here's another. This one's been modified to my specifications. I have a ring around it so it allows you to tune everything and put it down where most gimbals don't have that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the A7S in. And the first thing you have to do quickly here is just squeeze down the, ca the, the cage so that it puts the DSLR right in the middle. So we're gonna do that first and then we'll go into the balancing. So I got them both lined up here. Sliding them in. So now I have the camera in the actual gimbal. And now we can go ahead and start with the balancing. We have a lever up top, two at the bottom. We're gonna go with the roll axis. Get it to where it stays somewhat in the middle. Now it's telling me I need to fix this axis here. So the way you do that one on this gimbal is you bring this in from the back and you slide this over to get it to where it stays pretty pretty centered. So there we have it pretty well balanced and it's actually it, because it's lightweight and this is used to bigger cameras you it's gonna want to give a little more and it would be good to do a full calibration on it but for the most part it's pretty well balanced. This is the Moby Pro, the predecessor to the M15. I'm gonna go ahead and position the camera in the sled here. Slide it back to an optimal position and start my balancing. So here I can see that it's already asking to go forward and back. I can correct that via this axis here. Once again, we have a tilt axis, which is the one that I'm working on. That seems like it's pretty good, but let's test out the forward and back here. It's saying it's falling back. I'm going forward just a little bit. That looks good to me. My roll axis looks like it was already pretty good, but let me manipulate that real quick so you can see what it would do. If it was off, it would try to do something like that. So I would just correct that a little bit and fix that here. The next thing I would want to do is fix my pan. And you can see that it's not too bad. Actually, this looks like it's gonna swing pretty hard. So what we would do is fix this and bring it so that it's a very, very, very slow swing we want that to be almost non non-existent there on the swing so that feels okay 
do any other final tweaks here. But for the most part, it's looking pretty good. The rest, the motors will do the work. But essentially, you just want to be extremely dynamically balanced so you can get the most smooth, optimized shots. And as you can see, these gimbals all pretty much have the same concept. We have to balance, balance all the different axes, and then at that point, if you are super precise, you're gonna get super smooth motion. If you have any questions about any of these gimbals, ask below in the comments. If you want to uh, learn how to dynamically balance, click on this video. Um, also, you know, I really wanna thank you guys for checking out this thing. I'm Orlando from Filmatic. I will see you next time.